The coolest paper in 2023 for cloud came out in May, and for the rest of the year, it wasn't even close. On-demand container loading for AWS Lambda is a paper all about how the Lambda team made it possible for a 10 gigabyte container image to start and run in Lambda in about the same time or better as a zip-based Lambda function, which up to this point has been limited to 250 megabytes. They did probably four key things to make this work and to make it so performant and so efficient, and the paper itself is super approachable, but I wanna dive into it a little bit here. The first thing they realized is that Lambda container images are super common. There, there's a lot of commonality between what people are using. Uh, that's because they are generally driven by, you know, like a, a Python base image or a Node.js base image or a JVM, like a Java based image, and then a little bit of application code sort of sprinkled on top. The other thing to realize is that containers are objectively bad ways of packaging applications because they're super sparse. They contain a lot of data and files that the application doesn't need. That's sort of the, the curse of containers as a packaging mechanism. They contain an OS, they contain shared libraries like uh, libcurl or you know, libuv for Node.js, uh, and they contain all these different parts that are, are identical between you, me, and everyone else running Lambda. The team also realized that most container images don't need most of the code that's within them in order to start. An earlier paper found that only 6.5% of the bytes in a container image were needed at startup. So this is one of the best ways they found to reduce cold starts because they don't have to load all of those 10 gigabytes when those containers start up. So Lambda realized that they needed to build some sort of multi-tenant, multi-tier cache for, for container images on Lambda. But how they did it is really, really intriguing. But the Lambda team couldn't just cache everybody's Lambda functions everywhere. That would be too expensive and too non-performant. At the same time, they realized that many people are using many of the same dependencies over and over and over again. So they wanted to deduplicate that cache so that they could uh, have you know, smaller cache size, sm smaller cost overall, but still super performant, right? They had to do four things to put these pieces together to create this multi-tenant. So you, know, you and me are gonna share this cache, but that has to be done safely. And at the same time, they wanted to be multi-tiered so that they could have you know, the, the best performance possible. What they started with was realizing that they needed to create a file system for Lambda deterministically. Now, when you run a container image on something like Docker, Docker uses something called a storage driver to uh, run that image. And typically it uses something called overlayFS. Container images are stacks of tar.gz files and the last one is like read and write the rest of them are read only so you kind of create these uh, base layers and then you add on top this this image at the end that allows you to run your application and you know save files to whatever disk or, or whatever's backing your container image as a storage driver so that process typically is uh, concurrent and as a result it's not deterministic so you may write a file to temp or you just know, slash app or something but where those bytes land on disk and in what blocks can vary the lambda team realized that if they wanted to create and cache these file system chunks they would need to do that deterministically which means that they would have to abandon the concurrency that comes with normal file systems and instead they made some changes to ext4 to make that process serial this means that Every file is always gonna land in the same part of the block device every time it's executed or ran. This allows the next step of the process, which is actually chunking up these blocks of the file system into 512 kilobyte chunks. Now, they say in the paper that this number, 512 kilobytes, will change. You know, the smaller the size, the more likely you can deduplicate efficiently, but the larger the size, the less metadata you have to carry and kind of store and pass around. Okay, so we have deterministically serializable chunks, and now we've divided those chunks up. Now this is where the magic of multi-tenancy comes in. Lambda knows that code in Lambda is untrusted, right? The team knows that, that any Yahoo can upload whatever they want to Lambda and that, that code itself shouldn't really be considered trusted or canonical, but they also need to deduplicate and share that across customers. So how do they do that? When they create this file system, they chunk it up, they actually derive a encryption key from a hash of those 512 kilobyte chunks, which remember are deterministic. Every time you have the same 512 kilobyte chunks, it's gonna have the same hash value, and then they derive a uh, encryption key from that value. And they do that for the entire length of the image, so you get this manifest file, you get this list of, of keys and chunks, right? So every custom customer's Lambda function gets uploaded, it creates this manifest file with encryption keys for each chunk. Now what happens is that if your 512 kilobyte chunk and my 512 ki kilobyte chunk are identical, they'll have the same encryption key. This is what unlocks the ability of Lambda to cache a smaller number of chunks 
and then uh, deduplicate those and then share them across different users because you already have the key and that manifest file is encrypted with a consumer managed key or, or a internal AWS Lambda key in KMS. So it's secret, it's safe, it's encrypted, only your account has the keys for that. But once you decrypt that file, you've got all of these different chunks with their own key. And it doesn't actually matter whose bytes those chunks come from because the only way to decrypt them is with the key you already have with the hash value from the chunk itself. That's super clever. The last step is exactly what anyone would do, which is they created this multi-tier cache. Now it's a three level cache. The source level is S3, which is the exact same source that they use for normal zip-based Lambda functions. The second tier cache is within the availability zone. So it's actually in the data center. There's typically three or more per region. So you've got one at least in the building with the machines that run the Lambda function themselves. And then the final cache is the fastest, which is one that's on the machine. And that's the best because it's gonna be the lowest latency and it can load these chunks absolutely as fast as possible. What they found is this crazy mind blowing stat. They found that if today, you close this video and you go and upload a brand new Lambda function, you write a brand new container-based Lambda function, there's an 80% chance that that container image will have no unique bytes. They will have seen every single byte you write, everything that you, you haven't even written yet, every code you upload, 80% chance, they've already seen it, they already have it. Now, of course, the, the further stats break down and I'll add them over here because I don't remember exactly off the top of my head, but it rapidly approaches a very small number of unique bytes. And that's what makes the caching so efficient because they can assume that most people are shipping the same version of the JVM, the same version of Node, the same version of Python. And in fact, their own base images are probably the most popular and that's why they're able to pull this off. It's a crazy stat, it's an amazing paper. I went ahead and benchmarked and measured some of the performance of these container images running on Lambda compared to the same exact application in a zip file. And I'll add a link to that blog post in the description of this video so you can find that if you wanna run through it. Suffice it to say, uh, container images on Lambda have never been better. And if you're looking at adopting Lambda and you already have a container image, you already have an application, I definitely check it out. Definitely check out the paper. It's excellent. It's only about 14 pages and it's pretty easy to get through. I'll add a link here and in the video description, but take a look, read it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed this video.